Hi, my name is Ariella Halevi, and this is my husband, Baruch Halevi. That is me. And we want to welcome you to Soul Center, a center that is um, based in Denver, but also online, especially right now. And it is a center for loss, meaning, and healing. And so we have come together as a couple and in business. And we have, this is a dream, our business is a dream about, of about 21 years um, in the making. And really it's a center where you can find your healing and meaning. And Baruch will go into a little, um, you know, just an explanation about what he does. But I am the creator of the Divine Body Wisdom program and I offer all types of healing. I allow and guide people to really connect to their divine body and soul wisdom so they can, they can heal on a physical, emotional, and spiritual level. I do this three ways. I do a lot of energy healing, um, chakra clearing and Reiki, along with intuitive guidance, soul coaching, and I guide people in healing visualizations that elicit emotional response. So that is the healing portion of our center. and. There you go. It's a soul center, a center for loss, meaning, and healing, and it's all, all of those things. I really do focus on guiding people both through loss, all kinds of loss, like the loss that we're experiencing uh, in the world around us right now, <clears throat> which manifests as grief. Um, grief isn't just when we lose a loved one, but it's when we lose anything. And so guiding people very heavily right now through loss and then meaning, which is obviously tied to that. I'm a student of um, Dr. Victor Frankel, logotherapy. Dr. Frankel lived during a time of loss. He, he um, survived the Holocaust and found meaning in the darkest depths of the human experience and transformed his experience into something meaningful and then shared that light with others. And well, that's why we started Soul Center is to not, we didn't obviously see this coming, but we knew life has darkness in it. And when darkness comes, either we resign ourselves to it or we go into it and we transform it into light, if not for ourselves and for others. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So we thought tonight we would open with um, sound and the idea of om is a universal sound it's often you often find it in yoga studios but really it's a universal sound opening all of the centers in your body that contain energy and if energy doesn't work for you basically it just opens your body and opens your spirit to to calm to calm the nervous system so we're going to invite you to close your eyes and just begin to come into your body. Perhaps it's been a long day. It's definitely been a long couple of weeks. Um, and just begin to center yourself by taking a deep breath in and a long breath out. And begin to open your throat center to create sound. Sound is the action we take when we have ideas and creativity forming in the center of our heart and our bellies it's our emotions and it's all as we bring up the sound it's about creation and bringing it into action so taking a deep breath in oh. Begin to notice if you've come into your body just a little bit more, centering your soul, centering your body, and calming the emotions of the day. And so tonight we're going to talk about fear. Why? Because it's prevalent. If you close your eyes, you can probably feel not only the fear possibly inside of your household, but the fear in the world. You can definitely read about it if you choose to still. 
Um, but what we thought we would do tonight is give you a little um, window into our fear and anxiety and how kind of what we're dealing with um, being, you know, uh, household owners for children, um, working at the same time, homeschooling and dealing with the, the real fear. So we wanted to kind of go into that. We've been dealing with clients all week. Um, we felt like this was a very good topic to talk about fear because really, I think every client we've worked with is, um, you know, other issues are getting pushed in the back. And then what's at the, the center is this big issue that we're all de uh, dealing with right now. And how do we go into the darkness of fear and the emotion of fear instead of running away from it? So we're going to kind of explain how we're doing that. Yeah, like Ariella said, but just working with lots and lots of clients all week who it's just I've never been part of something so universal. None of us have. I mean, around the world, like everybody's feeling the same thing at the same time, individual, family, community, society, globally, and it's fear. And it's okay. And, you know, there's a saying in the self-help world, you can't, uh, you got to name it to tame it. And I'm working a lot all week with just naming what it is, describing what it is. And then Ariella talks a lot about feeling your feelings. And I think that we are so busy surviving right now and fearful, you know, grabbing toilet paper and everything else we think we need. And we do need these things. We're in such survival mode that to just to be able to pause like we are, you're doing it with us for the next few minutes and just to be able to breathe and to name our emotions is a starting point for feeling a sense of security in our life. So that's what we're doing. Absolutely. Great. And so now um, we have a reading on, on fear or acceptance. Do you want to read? Okay, I'm going to read her. <laughs> we don't script everything. <laughs> Feel the spirit. Okay. Let's talk about, so this is a wonderful um, reading by Jeff Foster, who's a fabulous author and leader. Emotion, emotion is always safe, even if it sometimes feels unsafe in its intensity. The body can be trusted absolutely. Intensity is not inherently dangerous. Planes are built to withstand even the most extreme turbulence. And so you learn to breathe through discomfort and lean into the rawness of the moment. And this is how even the deepest trauma is ultimately healed, through love, through deep acceptance, through faith, through penetrating even our most profound discomfort with a loving awareness, through coming out of our minds, out of the future, and into our present bodies. Trust the turbulence, my friend. It means that you're soaring. And so we'll um, continue with a song. It is um, Pure Heart by Nava Tehila. And if you don't know the words, you can just close your eyes and just listen to this idea of opening your heart center and really centering who you are and what you are during this time and just finding this sense of peace with inside of you. Create a pure heart in me, great spirit. Create a pure heart in me. Create a pure heart in me, great spirit. Create a pure heart in me. And renew within me and renew a pure soul within and renew a pure soul within me and renew a pure soul within create a pure heart in me great spirit Create a pure heart in me. Create a pure heart in me. Great Spirit, create a pure heart in me. One of the reasons why we sing, um, so we, 
both come out of the Jewish Kabbalistic tradition, mystical tradition, and then soul, the soul experience is not Jewish. It's Kabbalistically informed, but it is certainly not particular to any one religion. Um, we have put that onto the Saturday experience, which is more of kind of a Kabbalistic approach. But drawing from those wisdom traditions and principles, we sing um, a lot in Kabbalah to break free of the fear. Sometimes it's a song like Ariel sang. Sometimes it's um, you know more of a chant, but other times it's just sound. And maybe we'll do that um, before we have a conversation. But one of the reasons is why, because to combat fear, you can't do it passively. You can. There are different ways. But one way to move through fear is proactively. And so just kind of getting beyond our ego and ourself and just singing. I've been doing this a lot lately. It's called the Nigun, the song without words, just over and over. And you come out the other side feeling different. And so it's not just about talking our way through the fear, but feeling our way as well. Absolutely. So do you want to lead us in a very short meditation of sound? Yeah, I like how she said very short. <laughs> she knows me, I'm a rabbi. We don't do short. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I lost my voice. I just taught an hour and a half on Kabbalah, um, the Kabbalah experience. So it's worth it, but pay the price. So yeah, let's uh, let's combat the fear, right? To, to really confront the fear is a better word through just grounding down. You know, when we meditate in all traditions, you have to anchor yourself. And so just find a seated, comfortable position, but not too comfortable. You want to be solid, maybe vertical of some sort, even if you're seated. And then changing our physiological physiology changes our response to fear. When we're scared and when we're fearful, we, we start to slouch and withdraw. And so we sit as a as a prayer i mean as a meditation just sitting right now as a form of meditation mindfully choosing how you're going to sit to show up in this moment just take some deep breaths and through your nose holding it out through your mouth to continue to take some deep breaths feeling grounded it means we're solid Breathing deeply means we're mindful and in control. And breathing means we're alive. So just continue to be in that space. I'll let you breathe your way into it. And as you do with each breath in, a sense of security and each breath out, releasing anxiety and doubt and fear. Obviously, keep breathing, keep mindfully breathing. Encourage everybody to spend more and more time in this time of fear in quiet and solitude, but also, again, inviting you into maybe a chant with me. It's a very simple chant. You all know it. It's one word, amen, which means really I affirm a sense of security in the face of insecurity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And so, um, so we'll have a little discussion. We'd love to hear from you also. Um, as we said in the beginning, we're going to talk about a little bit about what we have both experienced in terms of fear and how we've gotten through it. So and we can see you um, on the chat. So please chat with us, send in questions. I haven't been able to do this so far, but I think, we, think we got you, so <laughs> chime in. So um, do you want to go first? or no, ladies, ladies first. <laughs> So I think last Thursday, our daughter Maya, she's 15 years old, she was complaining of not feeling well, and she had a fever, and so one thing led to another, and she ended up in quarantine in the basement of our home in her bedroom. Um, so for me, that led me to stop breathing. Like, literally, I, I stopped. Um, I couldn't catch my breath. Just so everybody knows, she's fine. Um, we believe she doesn't have the virus, but she's still in quarantine for about 14 days, so that's pretty hard. Um, she also has no fever, so she's good. However, last Thursday, this was not the case. Um, so I, when she went downstairs, I stopped breathing and um, continued to stop breathing to the point where Saturday night where she told us that she was having a hard time breathing, and I was calling the doctor at 10 o'clock at night, I literally was near panic. And so, again, she's fine. It turns out that her shortness of breath was also anxiety. I guess it runs in the family. You're probably freaking out my mom. I see my mom. <laughs> Everything's fine, Wendy, soft dash. <laughs> um, however, it wasn't fine, and it wasn't okay, and it was very, very scary. So by Sunday morning, I felt that I couldn't breathe at all, and I was in a full panic attack. The only time I had ever had a panic attack was when um, Baruch's father died many years ago, and I felt that familiar throat closing, tightness of breath, and it was it was real because it felt like this was it came into my home. It felt like it was this this virus that had it didn't feel like it, it is it, it is but it, it was like you know you read it and then it's and then it it seems like it, it becomes real in your inside of your own home and um i started to turn outward i tried to get him to talk to me and he was busy with the kids i tried to figure out who could i talk to to talk me off the ledge like how could i how could i who could i call to help me and when I realized that my intuition and my guidance system was saying, there is no help outside of you right now. You need to sit down. And so I sat in my chair that I always sit in, and I let myself, first of all, connect to my breath, the shortness of breath, and feel this intense wave of fear coming over me. So much so that it all came out of me and I sobbed. I mean, I was on the floor sobbing and sobbing. And so this is kind of, I mean, I know this sounds really hard and difficult, but this was so helpful. And so during this time while I was sobbing, I was also speaking out loud because one of the tools that I use with my clients and absolutely with myself almost every day is that I connect to my body and then I feel where the tightness is and where I'm holding it, and then I express it out. So sometimes that means crying, and sometimes that means raging, and sometimes it's just speaking and praying to the spirit, to the divine. And at this point, I was crying, and I expressed isolation. I felt alone. I felt terrified, and I let it all out, and then I could breathe. And I closed my eyes, and then part of what I do to center myself is to connect to spirit. And so once I got my feelings out, I could then go to that next level of connection of my soul and help heal myself. And so the connection to soul came as there was more space in my body. And when I allowed my soul to be present and felt more calm, I then did massive prayer. And if you don't believe in prayer, then it's still just talking. It's expressing from your deepest, deepest center of who you are, 
what you need right now, who, what you're grateful for, what you want more of, and for the divine to circle you in love and peace. Um, it was the only thing that I had to make me feel powerful because everything outside of me wasn't working. And so I really just dug in and felt my emotions. And I can tell you from then on, I started breathing again. And our daughter didn't get better until yesterday. Um, it was a really scary five days and I still could breathe even though I was scared. I could still be with myself in that fear. No, <clears throat> there's no one way to face adversity and move through it. Um, your way is the way. We, we are very different. That's why we get along and sometimes we don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you weren't here before the tape started. <laughs> These are the technical stuff to me. It's a heavy burden. But I guess that's, that's part of what I do. I, I don't process like Ariel, I process like me. And, um, and when I work with clients, I really reinforce this. Like, there is no right way. There's your way. And let's find your way. For me, I um, get quiet. I have to get quiet and kind of make sense of the world. Um, I'm more, con well, I guess we're controlling in different ways. But Ariella saw the implosion in our house, and I see the implosion in the world. And that's harder for me is what's happening on the outside. I feel myself is in a role of a protector. And if I can't protect my daughter and my family from this little virus and get them the need, the, the basic necessities, I went into like maximum overdrive, like, okay, mapping this out and planning. And, and for me, that actually, it's, it's part of my meditative process. I, I write, I journal, and I just get clear about like, and then I start labeling it, like what is real and what is not. And, some of it is really good. It's not fear. It's energy and is motivating me to take stock and make sure we have food and all of this. And some of it is anxiety, which turns into fear. And just being able to label the two and say they're not the same. I, mean, I helped Ariella with this because her grandma died the week before all of this started. Mm -hmm. And it was just, and, and if you're going through grief, uh, this is really difficult for everybody. But especially if you're new to grief, you just lost a loved one. It all becomes one thing, and that's impossible. And when I guide myself or people to get through hell, we don't talk about getting through hell. We talk about finding a place to put your foot, one foothold at a time. It's, and, that, and, and the outside world and what's happening has changed our sense of time. And I've been really working with myself and others on shortening our time frame, no longer thinking about years or months or weeks or even days, but like right here, right now, what can you do? What can you make sense in this moment? What are you feeling? Is it the grief of your grandmother or is it the anxiety of the coronavirus? Because they're getting all conflated and it becomes overwhelming and I can't breathe. And so what I do with myself and with others is clarity. It's called in um, Kabbalah, it's called Hippo Manut, which means just the clarifying process is a meditative spiritual practice. Sometimes we think of spirituality as only the chanting and the singing and the whatever, but meditative spiritual practice can also be making a list and having one that's, I'm gonna put all my anxieties on this list, and one is I'm gonna put all my real concerns on this list. And so we each have just been dealing with this in different ways, and you have your way. Um, but I think the most important piece in all of it is to become mindful right to not become out of control and not know why you're doing it and what you're doing it and why you're hoarding but even if you're going to hoard just say okay i'm hoarding and, and that's okay because this is what i need to go through right now but at least i'm aware and conscious of it and i'm not just living on autopilot feeling like i'm out of control as part of that out of control uh, world of the window i think also when you feel your fear no matter how you get to the emotion um, because we're all so different, that when you embrace it, when you take it by its hand and say, I'm going to feel this, then there is a certain acceptance that we come to when we can say, this is where I'm at right here. Tomorrow we may feel differently. Yesterday we definitely felt different. Today I am with right here with this. And so acceptance is not about accepting that it doesn't mean you like the situation. You don't have to like it at all. You can hate it. Mm. But if you're going to hate it and if you're going to have fear and have anxiety, 
then accept that it's here. It's what I, I think I wrote, I read in this in this poem before is that, you know, chasing, when we don't feel our feelings, we chase the feeling. When I wasn't breathing, I, it, it was because I wasn't sitting with myself long enough to really embody. I was really running. I was really scared. So I was running from it and I was just chasing it. I wasn't accepting it. When I sat down and accepted what was going on with me, what was going on in our house, I felt like I had some control over the situation. Right. And I would just say for me, it's the language of power. It's accepting is and taking, like you said, taking the fear by the hand is owning my power, taking back my power and saying to the fear that you're real, but you're not going to dictate how I respond. You know, Victor Frankl talks about our ultimate act as a human being is responsibility, response ability, the ability to respond. And if you are in fear, you react, you don't respond. And so what you're doing is accepting, is taking back your power and saying, you're going to sit in this room with me, fear, right? right. And you're real, right. but you're not going to dictate the way I react. Right. I'm going to respond. And I responded by inviting you into, into exactly. the space. And then you can feel your connection to your body and soul wisdom, which is that first step in, in, on the path of feeling. I think... For, for my work and my clients, like that I mostly work with people and myself because you teach what you need to learn, is that we are never taught, we were never taught how to feel. If we could say one like very basic thing about us as adults is that we don't really know how to feel. And um, when you feel, you step into your power. And then I'll take it further and say that when you feel, you step into your body. Because your body only knows right here and right now. Yes, we store things and we store memories, but the mind goes out into the future. When are we going to be out of this thing? I started feeling that way. I had these visions in my mind of like the kids leaving for school and then me really breaking down when I had actually space. But I pulled back and I said, but I don't know when that's going to be. And this is my head. My body, your body wants to stay right here in the here and now. And that's how you have power, is to stand inside of yourself and hold that for yourself. Love yourself, nurture yourself. Be kind to yourself during this time. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's what I meant by kind of naming it to tame it, name it to tame it, right? Is yeah. having this conversation either with, God or with your soul or with your dead loved ones or with your living loved ones or with a journal, but expressing it, right? To get it out of your, here we go on another round, uh, to get it out and to articulate. I just taught it to class in Kabbalah that words are things. In, in, in Kabbalah, the Hebrew word for word is devar, it's a thing, right? And the moment you put it into words, whether written or verbal, you're quantifying it and if you can quantify it and you can start breaking it down you can start moving through it because you can see the ingredients and where to step and where not to step and it's important not just to let it spin inside of you like a storm because it will take you true i think the final thought would be that um, where did she get the final thought because you said it because uh, <laughs> i'm in charge <laughs> just kidding <laughs> um okay can you feel the tension in our house final thought. Right, it's geez. real <laughs> Um, the, <laughs> the final thought would be that um, in there are there are people out there that can help you, and so not just us and physical people, but when I sat in the center of my own anxiety storm, I called upon my many deceased loved ones. I called upon I called upon their guidance in their soul form, not their body form, who they used to be, but their soul form. I asked for messages. I asked that I received divine messages that my child was going to be okay. I asked for guidance and extra protection around my house. Um, I, I believe in energy. I believe that if you ask for it and you open to it, this is a crazy time. If you don't believe, if you don't want to speak, that's fine. But maybe just a piece of you will be open to something deeper than us sitting right here. 
And so every morning I ask for protection and guidance and I put beautiful light around my house and around every single person in this house. And then I do it around the world. And it makes me feel more connected. I just tell them, we'll end with this because I want the final one. Um, <laughs> she said that she wants a sign, and we're walking. We live across the street from a cemetery, which is ironic since you know we go to the cemetery because there's nobody there, and it's like the safest so place to be right now. Peaceful. Don't tell everybody that the cemetery is the place to be. <laughs> um, so we're walking, and she says, "I want a sign." Can I tell this story? Yeah. And I look up, and of course, there's lots of stones, headstones. And there's one that says Doc, D-A-C-H, and that's her family's her maiden name. Um, and so it says Doc. And then she's like, oh, my God, I just asked for a sign. She verbalized it, and there you go, there's your sign. And we get closer, and I'm like, wait a minute, Stephen Doc, and that's her grandfather's name. And it's like, oh, my God, like you asked for signs. It says Doc. We get closer, it says Stephen Doc. And we get closer still, and I'm like, when did he die? And she's like, 1992. I'm like, 1992. That's what the headstone said. And so the bottom line is, Albert Einstein said, everything is a miracle or nothing is a miracle. And at times like this, when it feels like everything is a, a tragedy, um, then the opposite needs to happen, right? Where you have to combat that with this idea that there's possibility, there's meaning, there's miracles waiting to be discovered. And that's our job. And that's how we take back our voice and our power. Amen. Yeah, that's the last word. Okay. <laughs> so with that, we're going to um, spend a little more time bringing down some of the noise and the anxiety. So I think we'll go into the prayer for healing, and which is a really big deal right now. So I invite you to um, close your eyes and just begin to imagine that, you know, we talked a lot about prayer, and we talked about asking, and and um, receiving and so just opening right now opening your hands opening your heart to not only the people that you love and that you know of but imagine that you're holding the world in your hands imagine that you send your heart to new york that you send your heart to france that you send your heart to italy that you send your heart to the inside of your home imagine that your love and your beautiful power of prayer can circulate the world just as big as this virus. And so we'll begin with a song, a song of healing, asking that the divine spread her wings around all those that are ill right now, either with this or something prior to this. We just ask for divine healing. Source of healing, source of soul, please send us your light, please make us whole. Source of healing, source of soul, Please send us your light. Please make us whole. Source of healing. Source of soul. Please send us your light. Please make us do you want to say the prayer? Hold on. Well, but um, just one last thought about that. You know, I gave a Facebook Live yesterday, you know, multi-part series on um, on <clears throat> Viktor Frankl's philosophy, logo philosophy, finding meaning in our lives. And one of the central tenets is what we just chanted, which is, you know, we're here to couple is called to do tikkun nefesh to fix ourselves uh, maslow and uh, the human psychologists call it self-actualization to reach our highest potential but victor frankl says we have to go to the next step which is self-transcendence right Kabbalah it's called tikkun olam moving actualizing ourselves reaching our highest self everything we're talking about is so important that's how you actualize your highest authentic self and then go beyond yourself and that's why we do the healing prayer both to send energy out, but also to reawaken within us the call, 
that we are here to self-transcend. And at a time like this, now is the time to transcend ourselves by reaching out to others in, in our homes, outside of our homes, virtually, phone, whatever it might be, and just kind of think about who out there is has less than we do and to give them some of what we have to offer. And so, you know, it's really about reorienting ourselves. And this is a, a prayer by the Pueblo Indians. And it's called Hold On. It's just a short prayer, but it reminds us to orient ourselves also to what is right and what is good and what is whole. In a time when everything feels broken, it isn't all broken. It isn't all bad. There's good. Hold on to what is good, even if it's a handful of earth. Hold on to what you believe, even if it's a tree that stands by itself. Hold on to what you must do, even if it's a long way from here. Hold on to your life, even if it's easier to let go. Hold on to my hand, our hand, even if I've gone away from you. Hold on, because some of you aren't doing okay. I know I've spoken to you this week. So hold on and find something good in your life. There is meaning waiting for you in all of this. It is yours and yours alone. And only you can fulfill it. So please hold on. So we'll end with um, a prayer for loved ones that have passed on. And we just maybe close your eyes again and just bring to mind your loved ones that have passed on either during this time of the virus or you know, people in the world that we don't know that have passed away. And then and then think about your loved ones that Although their, their physical bodies are not here, their presence is always near. We just need to call upon them, asking them for extra guidance right now. And this prayer is not, it's not about the, the loss. It's about life. It's about celebrating life. And so we invite you to just close your eyes and be in this moment and thinking about those that we've lost and those that the the world has lost and just send them love and send each other love and light. No, just be much. May the one within and above bless us with your love. May the source of infinite light Guide us in our life. May the one within and above bless us with your love. May the source of infinite light guide us in our life. Shalom. Shalom. So we'll conclude our soul experience. Ariella will be back in about five minutes or less with the yoga experience. Meditation and yoga. The healing Enjoyment. experience, I think we call it now. We have mm -hmm. a healing experience, soul experience. And then on Saturday morning, we have the Shabbat experience. Everybody is welcome. You do not have to be Jewish. It's an idea that's ancient about finding time to stop and to make room for something bigger than the problems around us. And so that's what we'll do. You're invited Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Mountain Time. We're also offering during the week at 7 p.m. Um, an opportunity for you to experience healing through yoga and meditation about every other night, and then a teaching from Baruch every other night on different mm -hmm. on meaning. So we um, are really inviting you to find support to allow us to give to you in this way. And if at any time that you find that you need more support, we are offering um, usually we offer 30 minute discovery sessions to see what it would be like to work together. And right now we're really offering 30 minute sessions to complimentary sessions to just center your soul for 30 minutes. Um, and so with that, I think we'll end with love is all there is. 
out to us here's a contact info my soul and please forward these to anybody you know who's holding on to help them hold on <laughs> namaste <laughs> 